Welcome to the final episode of the Cardboard House. Well, this Cardboard House. More on that later. If you're new to my channel, we have been working on this house for about, well, a year now. This project grew out of the need to use household supplies because everyone was at home and unable to get their normal craft supplies. I have loved this project and I'm honestly very sad to see it come to an end, but I think it sparked a whole new series that I want to do here on my channel. This video is going to kind of be a mixture of all sorts of different things, so I will put timestamps in the description box below. First, we are going to make the final item for this house. Second, I'm going to be telling you the story of the cardboard house. And third, I'm going to be showing you some of the other cardboard builds that subscribers to my channel have built themselves. In a previous episode, I had many people tell me that I needed a telescope for my tower, and I borrowed one from my Adams Family project. But now I think the final touch for this project will be the cardboard house's own telescope made from household items to go on top of the tower. So let's get started. To begin this project, you're going to need some barbecue skewers. You can typically find these at the dollar store or at a grocery store for around a dollar for a hundred. I'm going to need a water bottle cap. I'm going to be using hot glue for this. I have my handy dandy easy cutter. And I'm also going to be using Miss Periwinkle to make sure I get the telescope at the right size. The water bottle cap is what's going to keep all three legs of the telescope together. So I'm using that to figure out how tall I need my legs to be. Once I figure that out, I can cut three of those exactly the same length. I'm going to be using the hot glue to quickly put them into place inside the edge of the water bottle cap. I'm trying to get them as even as possible, but they're really easy to pull out and re-glue if you don't get them right the first time. Then I'm just making sure that it holds up on its own. After they're completely dry and I like their positioning, I'm going to fill the entire cap with hot glue. Make sure that your cap is strong enough to do this. Sometimes plastic can deform with the heat of the glue. This will make sure that the legs stay in place. I've cut another barbecue skewer down that is the length that I want my telescope to be. I'm going to be using the cardstock to thicken up the barbecue skewer so that it looks like it's different thicknesses and it's a bit more of an interesting look than just a plain stick. So I'm just kind of guessing at the thicknesses I want here. This is something that you can kind of play around with if you decide to make your own telescope. A straight edge cutter like this one makes this step super easy, but it can also be done with scissors. To make the next few steps easier, I'm going to be pre-curling my cardstock. To do this, I'm just folding it over the barbecue skewer and then slightly turning it until it just rounds around the skewer. Then I can take it off. This is done totally dry. There is no glue the first time I do this. Then I can go back and add glue and it's going to be much easier to start curling the paper around the skewer. I'm using some Fabri-Tac, but tacky glue works just as well, and honestly, in the end, I felt like tacky glue worked a little bit better. Just make sure you don't use hot glue because it will be a little bit too lumpy for this part of the process. Once I'm happy with the initial glue to the stick, then I can add more glue to the paper and carefully start rolling the paper up so that the stick gets thicker and thicker. Once I'm happy with the thickness, I can go ahead and cut it off at an even length add my final amount of glue to the end, and then roll that and make sure that it sticks down flat. This is going to be my first layer for the thicker end of the telescope, and once it's dry, I can add another layer. This is a thinner piece of cardstock, and I'm just going to be gluing it on top of the previous layer I did and wrapping it until I'm happy with the thickness. It's the same exact steps, adding glue when I get to the end, and then pressing it down in place. And now I have one end of the telescope completed. The other end is supposed to be the eyepiece, or the part where you put your eye up to, so I'm just putting two layers, but they're much thinner to give a different look. I'm going to be continuing to wrap paper around the tripod legs. Many times tripods have telescoping legs, and so I wanted to give the illusion that these legs were telescoping as well, but really it's just paper glued around each leg. 
Now to add the neck of the telescope is what I'm going to call it. I'm going to be adding a piece right on top of the water bottle cap. So I'm checking it against Miss Periwinkle to make sure that the telescope will line up with her eye height. I'm also going to make this stick a little bit thicker by wrapping paper around it. This is also going to make it a little bit easier for me to glue it to the top of the bottle cap because I don't plan on drilling through the bottle cap. I added one more layer to make it a little bit thicker and now it's going to have a much wider gluing surface for when I glue it down. So this is how it should all look once it's put together. I'm going to be using hot glue to initially glue this piece down, but I don't want to only rely on hot glue to keep it together. So once the hot glue has cured, I am going to go around the entire piece with some other glue, Fabri-Tac or Tacky Glue, and I'm going to add that layer of glue to help the entire piece stay permanent. Once that's dry, I can go ahead and move on to attaching the telescope. Same thing, I am going to use hot glue to initially glue it, just so that it can take hold, but I don't want that to be its only means of staying together. So in order to reinforce it, I am going to take another thin strip of cardstock. I am folding it over with glue in between to create a double thickness. This is going to make a strap, I guess, a metal strap, well, we're gonna make it look like metal, that's going to go over the top of the telescope and go down and attach to the neck. This is going to be a much stronger way to add glue and reinforce its attachment to the telescope. Now I'm going to just kind of give a little bit of shape to this piece. I'm adding some V cuts to the very bottom so that it looks like it comes down and was purposely shaped to rotate on the neck. And I'll show you how it kind of looks once I get it glued down. Mm, whoops. I'm adding glue to the top first and then I'm adding glue to the sides and then I'm just going to hold it in place until the glue takes hold. I wanted to give some kind of detail to this telescope. Um, I didn't want to be too focused on making it sure it's accurate uh, because this is a fairy tale telescope, but I found this earring back in some of my extras and I thought it would make just a nice little addition. I wanted some kind of knob or something on the telescope to make it look like you could adjust something. So I just decided not to worry about it too much and glue the earring back on. I'm now going to be covering the entire thing in matte Mod Podge. The reason for this is that it's made from all different materials with all different textures, and this is going to give me one complete smooth painting surface, and it also gives some extra security in knowing that everything is firmly glued together. When I start painting, I know that in my mind I want this to be looking like an older telescope, one that's made from wood and metal. And so I'm starting with a layer of brown paint. And it's, when you're painting on top of Mod Podge, the first layer is not going to look super great. It's going to look a little streaky. So I think I put two coats of brown paint on here. There might be a few areas where I put a third coat on, but at least two coats of brown paint went on top of this telescope all over. Then I decided to take some tan and I wanted this to look like it's made out of wood or a lot of the pieces are made out of wood. So I'm carefully streaking the paint across the brown paint to make it look like a little bit of wood grain. I'm doing this along the main telescope body and also along the legs because I know I want those pieces to look like wood. I'm, I keep knocking it over. I'm not worrying about the pieces that I want to be metal while I'm doing the streaking. For the pieces that I want to be metal, I'm just going to go back and re-brush paint over those specific areas. I'm using the same exact brown paint. This is going to be a base to put on some antique copper. This is my folk art paint. I love this color. It always turns out so beautifully. And on all the pieces I want to be metal, I'm just going to lightly brush that on top and it's going to look like this really shiny copper that's holding my wooden telescope together. Here's a close-up of how the paint looks on top of the brown. All the other brown pieces that you see, I will be painting a metallic. 
I also need to focus on the front part of the telescope, so I'm going to be putting a layer of black paint in there because I do plan to put something on top of it to make it look like a lens. Now normally I would use some UV resin, but I know that's not really a household item, so I wanted to experiment with hot glue to see if I could make a little daub of hot glue that looked like a circular lens. And honestly, on my tile here, this is kind of my messy tile that just gets all sorts of stuff stuck to it. Um, it worked, but getting it off of the tile was a nightmare and ended up with a bunch of fingerprints, and it just didn't look good at all. So I decided to try and put the glue straight onto the telescope itself, and yes, this was a risk. I was a little afraid I was going to ruin it. Um, I, the first time I put it on there, it wasn't enough, so I had to go back and add more. Worst case scenario, I knew I'd just have to scrape it off and try again, or maybe add some more black paint, but in the end, this worked. It's a little bit cloudy, but again, this is a fairy tale telescope, and so I'm not too worried about it. I think for using household items, and I feel like hot glue is in a lot of households, um, it makes a pretty good lens for a tiny telescope. So this is the final result. Uh, I'm really happy. It looks like old wood, like wood that's been a little bit um, out in the open, so it's got that gray color to it. I really like how the metallics are contrasting with that, and it's at the right height for Miss Periwinkle. I know that's kind of hard to see. Um, she might have to like, scoot down a little bit, but um, yeah, I really like how it came out. It works really well on top of the tower, and I'm glad I took the time to make this one final piece. Now that our final piece is in place, it's time to tell you the story. I went a bit unconventional for this story, well, unconventional for me. I ended up writing a poem, and it's honestly a bit more about the characters I created for this house than the house itself. This is just for fun. I hope you enjoy it. Let's roll the story. There once were three young fairies, their colors purple, orange, and green, who lived in a magical clearing and did the things that fairies dream. The bright orange fairy named Clemine had talents for potions untold, but soon you will see that her pride made her brewing much too bold. The swift green fairy Almarine loved flying far and fast, Periwinkle, young and purple, always came in last. One day Clemine made a brew, its color strange and bright. She made one for her and Almarine, promising faster flight. Perry stood by as always, watching her siblings drink, and with a whoosh and rumble, the two fairies started to shrink. Perry knelt down carefully, for you know what she found? A tiny orange and green mushroom, both firmly planted in the ground. The orange mushroom shouted, and the green cried out in fright, but Periwinkle scooped them up and vowed to make things right. She built a home in the woods to keep them safe and sound, and started to experiment with all the magic things she'd found. She went through potions o'er and o'er, but nothing seemed to fix the problem Clemine had created with her awful liquid mix. One night while Perry was on a walk, something neither sibling could muster, she came upon a falling star still shining with slight luster. This is it, cried Periwinkle. She could feel it in her bones. She took the star back home with her and used the grinding stones. She mixed a bit of this and that, just following her hunch. Her siblings quietly rolled their eyes while eating their mushroom lunch. They put their trust in Periwinkle, for what else could they do? They let her sprinkle the dusty mixture, and then they suddenly grew. They grew to their normal fairy size, but then they kept on going. They quickly moved outside the house so they didn't break it with their growing. With a lasting whoosh and pop, the fairies hit their final size. There stood two giant dragons staring back with wide-set eyes. 
Well, at least you are not mushrooms, said Perry with a grin. Sometimes you lose in magic, but for Almarine, this was a win. He flew upward with a gust, testing out his dragon wings. He had never been so happy as when he was doing dragon things. Before Clamine, this was a loss, and she set herself to work. At least she had some claws to use. Compared to mushrooms, this was a perk. She sent Perry and Almarine on missions across the sky to find her perfect ingredients to finally set things right. Years and years had passed as Clamine mixed and mixed until she finally found the potion to call their problem fixed. She held the jar up to her brother who shook his dragon head. He'd already found his happiness while she'd been filled with dread. Clamine alone drank the potion and waited to transform, and slowly she shrunk down again, fingers crossed, to find her norm. While not as small as a mushroom, she was still not tall enough. She began to speak to Almarine, but what came out was a rough? I am a dog, cried Clamine, and a dragon dog at that. Why can't I fix this thing I've done and escape this nightmare I begat? Many years continued on, and the fairy three grew old. Clamine saw the wrinkles on Perry's face and the story that they told. I'm sorry, she said to her sis. All our time has been a waste. We could have been so happy if I had not brewed in haste. My life has not been wasted, said Periwinkle with a smile. I have spent it with my best of friends, and I have traveled every mile. Nor do I think dear Almarine would think our lives so sour. He has loved his dragon form, even though he wrecked our tower. I do wish you would realize you mean the most to us. In whatever form you take, our sister's worth the fuss. And if you want to carry on this dire search to heal, I will be there with you always. That is our forever deal. As Clamine's eyes filled with tears, she set down her dear pride. She finally saw her happiness was snuggled by her sister's side. The siblings now live happily, three forms purple, orange, and green, enjoying each other's journeys within this brand new fairy dream. Finally, I want to showcase some of the cardboard projects that you sent in to me. These were projects that were sent in via the email address that I requested in the past few videos, but I know there are many other cardboard projects out there and I have enjoyed seeing them all. I'm just going to be playing some music as these go by. I hope you enjoy the builds. Oh, and afterwards, I still want to talk to you a little bit about my new series idea and the fate or future of this cardboard house.
a while now has been to do some kind of charity donation with this house. I didn't feel comfortable donating the house itself because it's made of all sorts of different household items. So what I've decided to do is I am going to sell all the interiors, the furniture that I've made on my website, and all the proceeds from those sales are going to go to a charity. In the past, I've supported dollhouses for kids battling cancer, which I really love. I got in contact with the lady in charge of that, and she said they're not currently taking donations. So in lieu of that, I am going to be donating to Ronald McDonald House Charities, which has personally impacted some friends of mine, and I think it's a really great organization. So if you think you'd be interested in any of the items that were inside the cardboard house, I will leave a link to my shop in the description box below, and whenever those sell out, I will be making a donation. If you're not interested in any of the physical items, but you still want to contribute, I have collected all of my free patterns that came with the cardboard house and put them into one single PDF, so that's nine patterns in one PDF file, and I am also selling that on my website, so if you'd be interested in that, you can go check it out, and for the first two weeks or until all the furniture sells, whichever one lasts the longest, I will be collecting that money and that will also go towards the charity donation. As far as the future of my cardboard projects, I want to continue on. I want to make more cardboard projects, but in different genres. I'm keeping the house structure itself. For one, it would be difficult to mail. And for two, I think I can repurpose it. And I think that would be a great way to show that if you already have a project that you've built and you want to make something different, but you don't have room, you can repurpose some of the items that you already have. So if you have an idea for new genres or a way that I can transform the existing house that I have, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for going on this journey with me. I am so excited to continue making cardboard builds. Do know that it will be a little while before I start a new one because I have gravely ignored the captain's quarters. I see you looking at me over there. And I need to get to some other projects, but fear not, the Cardboard House will be back and we will be starting over with a brand new series. I hope you've enjoyed this journey as much as I have. I really feel like we were all just working on a project together and that gave me such joy over this past year. I hope you all have an amazing week and I will see you in the next one. Bye! The foam board's sad, the mat board's sad, the basswood is very angry, and why? Because we love cardboard now. That's right, straight out of the recycle bin, off the floor of your garage, cardboard.